Uh, good evening, everyone. I think everybody can hear me. Just confirm by raising a hand or um, just saying yes on the chat box, please. Yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you. All right, good. We'll just wait for a couple of minutes before we before everybody joins in. Quite a few people are already on board. By the way, for those who are uh, who have already joined in, I'll be taking you through uh, this entire conversation with Dr. Sharma, whom you can see on my left. Just hold on for a moment uh, till the time I give a green signal to commence. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let's commence the dialogue. But before that, I'll give you a short introduction about who I am, what we do, what we are. And uh, on my left, uh, you will see Dr. Rajiv B. Sharma, who is uh, uh, who will be with me in the panel to discuss uh, of what's going what's going on, what exactly is study abroad all about. And that's the very purpose of, uh, you know, everybody, all of us who have joined in in this conversation, we are quite eager to hear about what's happening exactly in the academic system across the world. And, uh, you know, what exactly is the future as we foresee or the academic system foresees in next few months or at least one year to go from here. But uh, before we start the conversation, I'll just take one minute to introduce myself my company, and then we'll go over into the dialogue with Dr. Sharma. Uh, my name is Rajiv Kumar, uh, as you know, and I have close to about 33, 34 years of experience of remaining in the academic system, both in India and overseas. I've uh, been into several corporations and into several positions. I was also, I've also been a global head for some time for a global company for uh, handling its uh, academic operations outside India. Um, in Latin American region, somewhere in Asia, and also um, sometime, some, somewhere in the region of Hong Kong. So, well, that's what that was close about me. But uh, let me just give you a broad, broad, very brief uh, overview, of, overview of Dr. Rajiv P. Sharma. He also happens to, you know, be an academic, uh, academic, again, uh, an academic veteran, I should say, of almost 34 years in the industry um, has he also had the honor of uh, you know launching a university about two years ago uh, in a project on, in which even I was associated with him in somewhere in the Indian zone and that was with a private limited company private private corporation uh, today he has been associated actually with uh, quite for quite some time in the finance industry also with a company with the name Motila Loswal. And uh, after that, he has been with uh, at a very senior and responsible position at Unicorn. Over last something like six to eight years, he's been with this company, which is TASMAC, TASMAC Global, more popularly known as TASA Asia. And TASA Asia or TASMAC, I should say, has been 
um, an organization in this, in the study abroad or, or academic space, I should say, from last about something like three decades. And uh, so that explains it all. We commenced the operation somewhere, um, somewhere about 30 years ago. And uh, we had, uh, we pioneered an international B school in which we used to do Indian programs and also in liaison with uh, one of the institution called University of Wales, um, which is based in UK. Uh, from there, we've gone a long way ahead and we've had uh, opportunities to, you know, um, have a specific or specific goal to, to commence or to start, uh, or I should say, to introduce study abroad in India. So we, have, we are today one of the Mr. Rajiv Kumar, you are on mute. Sorry, accidentally I went on mute. <laughs> sorry, sorry again. Technology sometimes it fails you at the last moment. Well, yes, uh, what I was trying to say is that we have been one of the largest B2B um, organization in the space of study abroad. We have close to about 600 agents across the Indian subcontinent, or I should say um, study in the in the South Asian region, which includes India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and few more countries uh, in the adjacent in the adjacent boundaries. With that, I should uh, you know uh, come directly to the topic of what uh, has been what is the basic topic for this conversation with uh, Dr. Sharma and all of you online. Um, exactly, you know what we will be talking about is what exactly is study abroad all about? You know. We have our own children, brothers, sisters, colleagues, sometimes, you know, associates known to us uh, with a specific interest. Uh, sometimes, you know, they say, I would like to go abroad to study. How much is the cost for doing that? Or what is what exactly worries them sometimes? Is that, am I directly eligible for doing, doing something like this? Is it going to help me going and study abroad? What if I don't want to return? I just want to settle out there. And what if I want to return? How exactly does a foreign education help me put myself or elevate my CV or resume? Uh, I think uh, we should discuss that for, for some moments before we duck, come directly to the topic, which has been a topic of the day today, which is what happens in a pandemic situation such as this. But before that, I would like to, you know, um, give this kind of question to Dr. Sharma from here uh, for these couple of questions that I just mentioned. So, Dr. Sharma, the first question that comes in anybody's mind is, what exactly is study abroad? And how many students uh, in India, for example, uh, you know, look forward to studying abroad at any point of time? So, what kind of study abroad market we are trying to, you know, look at? Uh, thank you, uh, Rajiv. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. And for such a you know nice introduction, uh, diving directly into the question, what you asked me uh, first, I think I would like to call it uh, overseas education uh, because study abroad is slightly misnomer. In this part of the country, we know it as study abroad, but outside the country, study abroad means something else. Okay, so I would like to call it overseas education. Uh, talking about India specifically. See, approximately, these are uh, estimated figures, obviously, around 5 lakh students go 
go abroad to study every year. And this industry is increasing at the rate of eight to 10% every year. Of course, sometimes there's an aberration, like I believe this year, there could be an aberration of the growth rate, what we have. Uh, but if you track over a period of time, I still remember my father did his engineering in 1964. Out of a batch mm -hmm. of 20 engineers, when he did, 17 mm -hmm. of them went to USA. Only three of them remain in India. One of them, I was father. The other two joined the Indian Air Force. Okay, so it's not today phenomena we are talking of. As for the government of India estimate, they say that currently at this point of time, approximately 9 lakh students are at this point of time are studying, right? When I say 5 lakh are going practically every year, this figure by the way, 5 lakh is of last year, I'm giving it to you. And, uh, and because they study for a period of time. So approximately 8 and 9 lakh students are studying. Now, if we talk in terms of numbers, money, we as Indians are spending in the range of 13 to 14 billion dollars every year behind our children. I'm repeating that figure to you, 40, 13 to 14 billion dollars. So mm. five lakh student spending 13 to 14 billion dollars. If you look, look at the India, the country, we have mm. approximately three and a half crore student studying in our higher education. I'm talking of higher education, not school. And these are spending around $24 billion. See the ratio. Three and a half crore students in India spending mm -hmm. around $24 billion, which includes you know, the, what the government gives them. You know, uh, we are subsidizing. Whereas uh, around five lakh students, or let's say total now, let's say nine lakh students who are already out, they're spending around $14 billion. So there's a size we are talking of, and it has been there for ages. In fact, if we can add, uh, the one of the best brains when they say in that country, I may not say best, best brains in India, but the best brains in this country, whether you talk of USA or Canada or UK, these are the traditional markets where people should go, are Indians. And we can, which we can see, you know, which we are able to realize when you, when you see in all in the news. So this overseas industry is a ambitious industry, let me put that way. I, as a parent, also want my child to go abroad. Uh, it may be different issue that I may want her to come back or some parent may, may want to come back and somebody wants me to settle there, right? But this is a, in the education industry, I call it, it's an ambition what every parent has that the child should go abroad and study. So I hope this explains so, the- Oh yes, oh yes. In fact, what we hear in the Indian history is that some of the, you know, like the, First Prime Minister of India or Mahatma Gandhi himself has uh, had a nice education <laughs> those days. And after that, whatever India became, it became probably because of that. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, so from taking a clue from there, I'm sure, you know, everybody realizes that there's something which start going and studying abroad does to the student. How does it elevate the student's CV or resume? Would you like to throw some light on that? Maybe 30 seconds? Yes, yes. Uh, see, there are a couple of reasons why people go to study abroad. The mm. first is a quality of education. Mm. I do not mean to say that India has a lesser quality of education, but the better quality education institutes are less and few. To give you a simple example, around 16 lakh students sit in an IITJ. That's the ambition of every parent who wants to make a child engineer. And you know mm. how many seats IIT has? You'll be surprised. Less than 10,000 seats. Mm. Out of 16 lakh students, less than 10,000 seats are there in IIT. Mm. Okay. So India has a dearth of good quality institutes. So the first reason people go abroad is a quality of education. Because that's known. Uh, the resources they have, uh, the importance they give to education. In fact, uh, in, ab in abroad, the best people in an industry also get into education. I, I don't think so. There's a case in India, right? Teaching as a as a profession is not a preferred profession. It may be a second or third or a fourth option of of, of people. Right, right, right. Okay. So first reason is quality of education. Second, second is the quality of life. They are see India is growing fast. It's a developing nation, or I think it's more than a developing nation. Uh, in terms of GDP, now we may be the fifth country uh, in the world. But to look at the per capita GDP of, of India is only two and a half thousand dollars. 
compared to a fifty thousand dollars approximately of any of those other countries what we are talking of. Mm. Right. So the quality of life. So it means for in in India, if you have your own house, if you have your car, mm. right, and or in a house means if you are a sort of a big house or a bungalow and a car, right, you are set in your life. This you will get in your life maybe after fifteen twenty years. their young kids of less than 5 5 years experience are able to get that because that's a given that's a basic necessity in those countries so second is a quality of life what they are able to get mm. the third it what it gives a boost to the career see please understand uh, these students when they're going and stay abroad they are appreciated mm. right they mm. are uh, even uh, a student obviously a brilliant student in india does mm. fantastically well but we have noticed is a experience that students who are average here also do extremely well right and there's a reason i'll tell you there's right. a very particular reason the particular reason is that they are able to, able to get the choice what they have mm. uh, i was taking a session few uh, weeks back of bca students there were more than some 250 bca students and i told them they were flabbergasted in india after bca what they have is couple of courses maybe four five they could count Mm. when you go and study abroad you can actually do 135 courses post your bsc in the space of technology by the way i'm not talking about management other spaces 135 options are there for a child to do so they get a very very wide options right so mm. accordingly we have found out that these are the three main reasons uh, for people so it means uh, quality of education quality of life you able to have and your career takes a very very high boost out of it. so these are primary reasons what students go and study to abroad thanks uh, in fact that substantiates uh, you know one of the statements which i heard from one of my relative when i was uh, wanting to study abroad just when i was something like 18 or 19 years old and he said i'll i'll rather say that in hindi because that makes says more more sense ki bada jab jis cheez ko aap yahan achievement sakte ho zindagi yahan se shuru hoti hai so when you say you buy a car from here uh by the time you are 32 or 33 years old over there you are gifted your car first car when you are 18 years old or maybe even lesser you start traveling by air when that's considered as an achievement but here here you start your life from the, like that or we over there in us so i mean that that says a lot a lot about it anyway coming uh, uh, i think um, uh, that was very convincing to everybody i'm sure who are participating in this exercise with us or who are there in this session with us study abroad has been in special news this year well everybody knows the, actually a bigger news is a pandemic situation but in this particular year uh, things have uh, gone into limelight for wrong or right reasons and people have been impacted for you know in various different ways study abroad of course was it goes unsaid that there are students who are currently under pursuing some or the other education abroad or there are students who are planning to do it so it is definitely in the special news this time and uh, we do find you know many parents and students who are tensed about what will happen to their plan if at all they planned about it um, during this situation on study abroad so i'm sure everybody is on uh, with me on this on, on the same page as far as this basic question is concerned and that's what we are going to discuss discuss in this uh, session with dr sharma dr sharma first thing first uh, you know actually i have multiple questions that have come in already coming in from several several participants here and uh, plus there were certain questions that i also listed down with me before i before i came to this session students were in a semi prepared state i should say when this entire pandemic situation started sometime in january to march when i say semi prepared it means as students who are planning to or students who are partly prepared in terms of their ielts or gre or gmat preparation and students and uh, with that kind of situation which turned up sometime in february or march the lockdown began almost everywhere in the world um, the students and parents are certainly confused and concerned of whether first of all they should go or not so you know whether whether it's going uh, the going was scheduled in summer which is may which is already passed by or for coming fall which is september of 2020 or spring of you know 2021 so these are you know three sessions uh, which people were quite confused and they are they are even today they are confused as to whether they should go or not so that's a basic question which which they would like to answer before we you know even proceed to anything else yeah, so what do you have to say sir yeah thank you 
So before just answering the question, I will take you uh, to uh, answer, uh, add few points what you add in the starting. See, uh, when this pandemic uh, happened, uh, okay, to just give you a, a number, around 51 lakh students study across their borders. By the way, this international education market overall in the world is worth 51 lakh. And in terms of money, it is worth $1.6 trillion. So it is a pretty big industry and cross-border migration which happens uh, for the student uh, uh, level. That's first. Secondly, so uh, the biggest news obviously was the pandemic. Uh, uh, so healthcare industry. Second biggest news was tourism and uh, airline industry, which went. And the third biggest news was this uh, education industry. Right? Yes. yes and it right. happened at such a time that there was a, most of the places there was a vacation, right? Because mm -hmm. in January, in fact, there's, there's a, a break even in March and students went home, many of them, and they couldn't return back, right? So mm -hmm. hence, the tents started from there. So there are two parts. One is existing student, one is students going to go. I will answer this question into two parts. So whichever are places existing students have been there, uh, initially, you know, the uh, universities and colleges didn't know what to do, but they quickly, you know, uh, gathered their uh, resources together and they started classes online. Right. As you know, we also have thousands of students, you know, which are studying there and we got a lot of panic calls from parents and students and, you know, everybody. So those online classes are here, are happening. Now, many of the students who couldn't travel back who are there are continuing with their online classes, which are, I think, the, which have now got over their last semester. Hmm. So not as different, they are on to their, uh, their education path. So that has been taken care of for the time being. Now talking of future, what happens now? Now, if you look at the scenario, now most of the countries have closed their borders, including India. Now, few mm -hmm. countries have started opening their borders. To give an example, Germany, Sweden, you know, they have started opening a door, but India is still closed. You cannot go out. Right, right. So students who are uh, going to go uh, for the fall, which I mean by in a normal term, the semester starting in August end, or we call it the September semester, uh, the universities have given options to people. These I'm talking about the fresh admissions, please. The yeah. existing uh, students which are there, they will continue to study online. Okay, yeah. that's what they have done. Or many universities are given a choice of blended learning. If you're in that country, so some classes will happen face-to-face. Uh, -face. Hmm. Many of the classes will happen online. And obviously, they are taking care of the social distancing, all those norms which are there. So all those norms are being taken care of. So there's a, the second choice is a blended learning. So UCs are giving choice to students, existing mm -hmm. students, either to do blending learning or online. So that I think more or less uh, UCs have taken care of and uh, uh, the existing students are set. For a fresh students who want to go fresh now in this year, first, uh, the summer, which is the May, May time has gone. Students are not able to go. Mm -hmm. The second, which is coming, by the way, May, May session is a small session. The biggest session where maximum students go, including from India, is September session. Because you, right, finish, right. All your, yeah, you finish all your core classes you and every course are there, and then get ready for September. Then right. you get ready for that. Right, so there, right. there are a few options UCs are giving. UCs are, now there, ah. there are three, four options they're giving. First option they're giving is you can start a course online. So sitting here in India, you start online. Second option they are giving, you can defer your course. It means shift your admission to January or mm -hmm. summer or next year fall. So that's the second option uh, they are giving. Third option, they are also giving students to withdraw. By the way, we, we did a, a big research with our students, current students, things like this. And you'll be surprised to know only 7% of the students actually wanted to withdraw. Most of them wanted to continue with their plan of studying abroad. Right. Now, what will happen further? It's all uh, open currently because you still have decided there. Now, it's all depend on the governments. Right. Your, your embassy should open in India, mm. right? Your mm. airline should open for you to take you there. Exactly, exactly. Right. Those and, are yeah, closed. and those countries should be open to willing to take. So, for example, now Canada has said they're willing to take students. You can go there. Uh, Germany has said that. Uh, today, by the way, I, I received a circular from uh, the UK government, government. right? Ah. Saying that, yes, uh, they give you a choice. You are going to be open. Obviously, they have put some rules. Ki when you come there, there will be 14 days of quarantine. And, uh, you know, the typical rules, what we all know of, uh, are being there. But the problem is, the, currently, the government of India has not decided on the flights from India to UK, right? So even if you want to, you may not be able to go. 
Secondly, the embassy of UK is not open. Where do you get your visa? Right. So there are some uncertainties currently, mm -hmm. and which is not from the angle of a UST or a student. It is mm -hmm. government to governments, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one. The second, many of the parents ask me, "Ki sir, what happens? COVID? There is no, you know, there is no vaccine. There is nothing." I say, "See, uh, we have to follow all the norms." Okay, mm. about the uh, health norms which have been given by government. Mm. Okay, and then the norms are same across the world. Right, right. But awesome. if you have to, if a child catches COVID in mm. India, do mm. you think he will be in a better position, medical system in India or maybe in let's say UK or USA? I leave the decision to you. But this much I know that the medical system is taken. In fact, you know that circle I was talking of the UK government today actually said that. That in the insurance policy, some NES they were talking of. If you are caught with something, you are insured under that, and the government will take care of you in our hospitals. They was very very particular on this point, mm. right? So um, when when we will find a vaccine for COVID, none of us know, right? Mm. Somebody says one month, two months. Somebody says twelve months, eighteen months. Right, and it can happen. Uh, let's say uh, in UK, US, it can happen in India. Right, uh, we so so it is all very very hanging now. And if you if you look at the numbers now in this area also, like GDP of India, India has come number fourth in the world now in numbers of COVID patients. What we have? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, right. <laughs> and and in spite of the such a big lockdown, I I doubt such a strong lockdown has been done by any country. Like what India has done for such a for long time, it's more than seventy-five days. We have to lock down. Nah, it's pleasing to know that most of the students who are quite determined, uh, they have not changed their plans. So if you, if anybody asks this question, this kind of question, sir, should I go or not? Uh, well, and if we have left it to students and their parents, etc., they don't want to change their plans. That's very, very sure, and it justifies uh, uh, for all the merits and the advantages attached to the study abroad. Uh, you know. Qualification when it adds to your CV, and uh, when you said only seven percent students across, uh, what to whom to whom who to whom have we uh, got in touch with, or they got in touch with us, had uh, given us a request for uh, withdrawal in case you want to. Oh, so, uh, Rajya, just add a figure. That's that's Basically. very that's very nice to know. So the, in a in a way, Dr. Sharma, what you want to say, what you want to say is, in case this kind of a question comes up in the minds of students or uh, or students' parents. Of whether I should go or not in this case. So the answer is not yes or no. It's like how and when, right? Yes, yes. So it's how and when. Uh, mm -hmm. I will just add. By the way, this survey was not. You know, we are talking a couple of years. This survey was done over five thousand students, mm -hmm. not one and two. Mm -hmm. Five thousand students who have the intent, or they were in some process of their international study. Right, right. And five thousand is not a small number, but it's not a small number. It's not a small number. Yeah. All right, uh, Tasa Asia, as uh, we know, that is associated with several universities. So, how are universities planning their way ahead, uh, sir? You already mentioned that most some of the universities have started to commence their online sessions, etc. So, would you like to throw some light on that, sir? Yes. So, I think now more and more universities are getting a clarity uh, how they want to go ahead, right? Mm. Uh, so, there are I'm I'm not there are three four options they have taken. Mm. So the first option they say it will start as scheduled on August 26th or 24th, 26th, whatever the date is, mm. via online method. That's mm. the first option uh, they are giving to the mm. student. Mm. The second option uh, they are giving uh, the country which are open. He we are starting face to face. So for mm. example, couple of you know last week we we got a uh, mail from couple of colleagues in Switzerland uh, because in Switzerland on I think 29th of June. They are starting the face-to-face -face classes. They open right. up, right? right. They're, they're opening up. They are, they similar, open similar up. thing I got from Germany. Mm. Okay, so the, they are saying you are welcome. Okay, face-to-face -face classes are studying are starting. The third, UCs are now colleges are giving option as I told you to for mm. students to defer. They are saying okay, you don't want to come, right? There are some challenges which is beyond you. Uh, mm. Defer your admission to January. But here I like to give a caution to students. deferment uh, for you please take a admission by taking admission whatever your terms and conditions of admission it may mean giving a deposit 
because many of the universities for example british universities are asking for 10 150 pounds hmm. or uh, something like that so take your admission do whatever activities and then ask for a change in the session which is january or further uh the third said you see saying that if you, if you still don't want to come to you want to drop your plan uh mm-hmm. they are saying that uh we will refer uh, refund back your money right obviously they are going to direct some minor uh, administrative charge so these mm-hmm. are three actions what the universities are are doing and taking so taking a clue from there from what you just said it means that the student may even decide to go for instead of going for country x he might decide to go for country y y which is safe secure and have opened up today in place of you know some already planned country so the choice of country probably could change is that what okay. i'm trying to say yes i i will just add something to this rajiv uh see as a organization uh when we started this organization one of the uh, lacunas we find in the in the current uh, study abroad system what is happening currently is people are asked about the country where they want to go according to me it's a wrong question to ask that i just said the second point the reason i told you students are going for the career hmm. so as a organization as such when we suggest when we look at the career we look at the best programs he can do across the world so the options when we give to the student right is across countries right for example a student says i want to i am comfortable with english speaking countries right, right. so the right. options he is being given is usa um, uh, canada uk australia Hmm. right looking at the ch- or ireland you know just giving an example if he's c- customer saying ki, okay i'm i'm fine with also learning a language right uh-huh. so then we give addition to like germany you know spain france uh, uh, japan you know so many other uh, countries are also given to him so as such i have i will request the student uh, ki when you are going for uh, your admissions hmm. that time itself you have to have your fall back plans because each country has a different visa routes right so it means don't get stuck up on a country look at your career the program you want to do is going to progress where the progress is going to have so as such in your list you should have set of programs and the country wise so that's the backup plan you need to have because you don't know about visa routes you know because visa is not given by us mm-hmm. so currently if you have not done it right i will ask you to actively look at that portion of fall back of countries which are open right which you should have done earlier if you not done it look at it now that's my what you're trying to ha huh, what you're trying to say is if a person is uh, uh, flexible enough that he looks he is aiming for best quality education and the best country to live in so in that case he should not be stuck around with uh, you know one particular country or agar nahi jana ho raha hai kisi karan se wahan par so you know root ke do baith jana ke mere se kuch nahi hoga something like that should not happen so rajiv it's, it's like it's like it's like multiple it's like multiple options are always available agar thoda sa insaan flexible ho jata hai to usi quality ki country usi quality of education mein yahan kabhi kabhi usse bhi behtar is is definitely available at you know multiple uh, in do, so many different countries this is what you're trying to say sir yeah main aapko ek ek india ka example deta hu agar mere ko mba karna hai तो मैं एमबीए में ये ये देखूंगा कि मुझे बॉम्बे से एमबीए करना है या पुणे से करना है कि बैंगलोर से करना है कि दिल्ली से करना है आई विल से यार आई विल गो फॉर लाइक माय फर्स्ट चॉइस इज आई एम्स राइट आई एम अ रैंकिंग आई एम अहमदाबाद फर्स्ट है कलकत्ता सेकंड है यू नो बैंगलोर थर्ड है सो दैट्स हाउ वी विल गो दैट इज ट्रू अक्रॉस आल्सो राइट दैट्स राइट दैट्स राइट ओके अह वी यू जस्ट मेंशन सर दैट यू नो सम यूनिवर्सिटीज हैव डिसाइडेड टू do the program um, in the online mode or at least for the current semester this is what you try to say so and some students want to you know they have a doubt will the quality be different is there any quality compromise uh, you know possible when you when students study in, in the online mode okay uh, let me just slightly give you the way studies happen abroad i know this is an interim solution that the student, that the universities are come out with no. but it can prolong itself to at least for a semester sometimes so the students are kind of worried no it's it's in quality mein koi compromise to nahi hoga what am i missing if i am not going to the campus okay so first it's not a temporary solution as mm-hmm. such when you go there to study you are given a choice mm-hmm. uh saying that out of let's say every semester you need to take three three subjects 
you mm. can do to maintain your uh, student status you can take up to one subject online aur bachche lete hain abhi bhi lete hain right they currently also do it okay the only thing not has happened that all the three subjects are being taught online you know there's a difference which is which is happening that's an example mm-hmm. now looking at quality see the quality of education whether you are sitting in a class um especially in a large class um uh, you are not having much personal interaction you are listening to a professor right again give me an example the way the studies happen lectures are one part second part they give which is not happen in india is lot of project work or self study so project work research and self study mm. right and team work it's a combination all of these which a student student has to study so to give an example wahan par wo credit hours mein measure kiya jata hai right so okay, credit hours mein se part of it is only taught physical you know physical or in classroom mm-hmm. so if i want to learn okay so physical or a online does not make a difference to me okay because i am to be by the way in online you have to be self motivated ye problem kisko ho sakta hai apan school ke bacche hain unko problem ho sakta hai ki wo kuch aur khel raha hai kuch karne lag gaya you know but agar aap matured hain aur aap itna paisa kharch kar rahe hain aur aapke usme career is your objective you will not do around play around right but what is missing yes what is missing is a campus life mm-hmm. what fun you have in your cafeteria can continue mein jo masti karte the jo aap khelna karte the obviously that is missing out of it uh, so what people say is the campus experience which is missing when you do that so according to us if you do it for a short while mm. it's fine mm. all right okay. if okay. you have to do for a prolonged person that's mm. one area you're going to miss that you need to be clear about it right because that also we believe is part of the development being with friends uh, even a cafeteria gossip is important you know Uh, sports is important what you play around is important you know these are very important things which are <laughs> yeah right right i think i think you're pretty right in this if the student wants to study he will not miss anything so the academic uh, compromise is nearly nil or negligible okay but yes one will mill anyone will of course miss the you the not the non academic uh, he will get into a non academic compromise like for example uh the boyfriends the campus life the city uh, of an advanced world etc so definitely that will be missed out but i'm sure this will be for a uh, shorter duration maybe a quarter or a semester at best and once the campus life op- campus opens up the universities are back to normal you will have an you will have a face to face session very now um, very soon right yes yes so currently that's the indication most of the ust to so give you example see california state university system that's mm-hmm. the largest education system in us mm-hmm. has already declared is more than i think 20 days that mm-hmm. the entire uh, semester yeah. this semester will be done online in right. all campuses of california state university mm-hmm. right uh dr sharma i'll just switch to uh, one of the past uh, questions uh, that was answered by you because somebody is trying to ask me this uh you said if the student has uh, wants to want, wanted to get into say fall semester which is 2021 september the university is giving him choice to you know defer the whole thing to in case he wants to defer he can defer it to next year january which is spring of next year 2021 but what should what is your advice as to what should the student ideally do in case this, he gets into this kind of situation that if the situation opens up in july or august the flights will open up the embassies will open up for visa visa approvals and the university is also open so if he has a choice should he go or should he defer his decision to uh, january next year see uh, he should go i will tell you reason uh, the reason what would he do sitting here okay if he is a undergraduate student he will have a gap he will have a gap here right right, right. and jo bolte na khali dimag shaitan ka dimag okay yahan baith ke bhi what he is going to do he is going to at best learn something via online only ah. right? he will go to different portals he will you know uh, of course byju's bachcho ke liye bachcho ke liye but there are uh, there are other portals which are there you know uh, mm. there are coursera he will do online right mm. and most of the time he will not do anything yahan ke college mein wohi hone wala hai right mm. so the uh, uh, the corona is not going away let let's accept that point yeah okay. that's right corona is not going away only the lockdowns are opening up so it's like yes. unlocking but uh, no compromise on the disease yes yes so uh, according to me if that country is open university is open and university is having face to face right i'm uh-huh. particularly saying 
having a face to face uh, session out of the badle mm. like let's say a lot of german university have shifted their session now to october the sessions is start in august have now been shifted to october and they say by the time and is a face to face so what you're trying to say is in case a university opens up and the administrative formalities allow you to go like flights visas etc you should take that option of uh, joining in should. september or october but you also mentioned uh, about bachelors what if a student is a post grad student then what okay so uh, i let me divide in three parts bachelor i already told you if if you are a bachelor do you, if if it's starting in online start online right because you still you will have two and a half to three and a half years in that country you can mm -hmm. always go back because uh, people don't take uh, after 12th gap year in india mm -hmm. right in india because uh, that's not part of our psych mm -hmm. uh, as for masters are concerned mm -hmm. uh, very clearly i will advise if you have a course which is anywhere one year or 12 months or 15 months or 18 months mm -hmm. defer so defer. okay so the decisions are or the advice is differently placed yes for a bachelor student or a master student Ma bachelor students definitely go and join anyway that country will be better prepared than this region and uh, even, if it, even if you're starting online i'm repeating even if you're starting if online. start online so from sitting uh -huh. from india start your course right and if it is if it is a master's program admission or a pg admission then especially if it is a 12 to 15 months uh, you know pg yes. yeah for it for some time yeah so but if your master is 2 years mm. and you have a running job defer if Defer. you don't have a running job you don't have to go then you can start online the All idea right. is you should not waste your time because see whatever we feel the clear indications across the world is that whatever is happening is mm. uh, you know closing of borders and things like that at most we be finished by the year end at most that's the upper limit september is what everybody is saying now so I, one should get into a discussion with the university and if they allow deferment of say up to january next year if one should take that option yes yes all right and continue with whatever job or any other activity yes. that you're doing any academic yes. activity that you are doing continue with that please continue with that yeah all right there's another question which has come up it says uh, sir my indian final year exams are pending of course they are so what do i do for this time shall i continue my preparations my answer would be yes of course continue if you are inclined oh. to go definitely continue with the preparations of uh, going abroad in fact uh, you should take this as a bonus time to your hand and uh, if you are a uh, say 7 out of 9 uh, band score in ielts for example aim for an 8 you'll get better better place i'm sure you'll agree with me sir yeah i, I will i will add couple of things i think this is a mess norm most of the students have Hmm. if you to go abroad aapko 3 4 6 mahine mein kaam ho jata hai no hmm. Hmm. if you to go abroad it requires a preparation of minimum one year ideally we ask students for two years right because see i, I um, and i have um, uh, i actually let me use the word i don't like what is happening in that sense is currently the admissions structure in the way abroad is very different compared to india hmm. right there they look mm. at some 8 to 9 criteria for your admission mm. right in india it is only either entrance exam or your 12th uh, mark uh, final mark or your undergrad final mark you know mm. at best they may one entrance exam beyond that there's nothing for good good institute they don't look at anything else right mm. so it means you have to build your cv why i feel sad because i feel most of the students are going and studying in a university which is below their potential right they are not able to take benefit of scholarships they are not able to take lot of other benefit so as a um, advisor you know as a person in this in, in this international market for such long years my advice to students is at least start preparing two years before right build up your cv we call it a building up a cv right and hence you will get better admissions better colleges you may get good scholarships you know better programs you know all these things will come to you excellent sir so that is a, that's a nice advice anyway yes we know that you know the preparation is not like three or four months preparation time going abroad is a, should take ideally should take say more than a year or one and a half years at least in your in, in your and you should have and if you continue with your preparations definitely you're going to get some this this is a bonus time to you do not waste it focus on your regular academics the indian academics and your test prep scores should if they become better you're going to get better university maybe an ivy league university somewhere in the world definitely prepare for it this is a message to all
Uh, I've got another question, sir, uh, received from one student, and he says, uh, well, he wants to go, but he doesn't want to go now. Definitely when the situation corrects, he's inclined to go. So if it, if it is a gap, he wants to take it, probably. What, what are the options I can take now? He's asking. So, okay, let me put you, the, again, the answer may differ if you're an undergraduate or a master's student. Okay. okay. Uh, as I said, if you're an undergraduate st student, you're pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, what you do in that six, seven months or whatever the time frame, whether you want to go now in Jan or you go next year. So you have anywhere from six months to one year in your, in your hand. So I will only say, do something productive. Secondly, mm -hmm. please understand, you have to explain your gap. And it has used even they give you admission, they look at a logical admission. If you are a, uh, going for a master's, I will strongly recommend that you start working somewhere. Get an experience. Right. Uh, in India, we, we continue our education after undergraduate to you know, the master's. Abroad doesn't happen. They, after undergraduate, they work minimum for two to three years. And then they go for their master's studies. So if you have a gap, please use it for working, internship, getting a real life experience. That is going to be amongst very, very important. Plus, I will also recommend that you start doing some online courses from any of those portals in your area of specialization. Whichever area you're going, yeah. right? Prepare yes. yourself better, right? And prepare mentally. It's again very important because it's not only the style of education, it's a different country, culture, everything changes, right? So first six months, uh, students get a lot of shocks by the way, when they go there. Of course, they used to do a lot of things to make them comfortable. Mm. They have alumni network, their own country, you know, uh, clubs are there. They make it, but all said and done, it is, it is that way, you know, you get a shock. Yeah, I think you're pretty, pretty right on this. Uh, whenever the situation corrects, he definitely wants to take it. But my, uh, you know, in addition to what you say, I think uh, I'll add on to this. Some students have been, you know, doing something for the sake of doing something for these three months or six months of gap. I must advise them to, you know, do something which is in line with your, uh, your, your academics, academic pathway. So you should not be doing something for the sake of it. Uh, you won't be able to prove yourself uh, to the university admission officer later as to why did you do something which is off, off track? You won't be able to prove it. So please try your best. You can take up a voluntary activity for a volunteering activity, which is also, you know, impresses the admission officers on the, in, in the universities many times. But if you take anything, uh, you know, which is quite a way different from whatever you are doing, I mean, if you are in finance line, don't take anything non-finance. My advice is this. I think you'll agree to this, right? All right. Uh, coming from the, um, the questions, uh, I've tried to group some questions uh, which have come to me on the, you know, on the financial sec, on the financials part. Uh, student is trying to ask if the university conducts, um, well, he's asking for a discount, I think. He says if the university conducts first semester online, will there be a reduction in fee possible? It's possible. Uh, see, I think I explained this slightly earlier. Online as part of the education or blended education is a part of international, most of the UCs for some mm -hmm. time now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there will be no reduction as far as I know. There may be some stuff they may give off and on, but as a rule, there will be no uh, reduction. Of course, there's a lot of hue and cry on that, on that issue, mm -hmm. right? But what you will save your cost is other costs. What are related to that? First is living cost. You will not believe, uh, Rajiv, in many of the countries, your tuition fee cost, what you give, and your living cost, mm -hmm. which is stay and food, is, is similar. It's okay. approximately $1,000 or 1,000 pounds, whichever country is 1,000 figure per month. Right? Plus some few additional things which you have to pay only when you go to the campus, campus you know, like insurance and a few things. That is what you will base. Because the entire fee is different, different components. But mm -hmm. I don't believe UCs are anywhere interested to reduce the tuition fee, especially when it's also getting into online, online tuition fees. For I, agree, I, I agree with you. There would be, uh, I don't anticipate any reduction of fees because the quality of academics remains the same. Yes, the campus life is missing. That's what we discussed slightly earlier. But yes, the student does save, uh, you know, 50% of his total expensive, uh, expenses on the living cost. He saves a lot of money. He's staying in his own house uh, at the comfort of his own home. And he's only studying, so that's supposed to be, that's the only expense that he has to incur. So they, they, let's not expect any reduction in fees. So, in other words, you know, there are students who are asking us about 
whether there will be extra scholarships. Uh, well, it is in the same line of what we are trying to answer. I don't think that will be possible. But on a random basis, if there are you know if there, if there are institutions that are coming up with uh, scholarship offers that are anyway routine, and we should we can anticipate them or ignore them whenever they come up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and we inform, matlab as an organization, we inform them. Like, yes, you know, yes. Yesterday we we got it from a German news team. We inform is for exactly, October exactly, session, yeah. and we inform the students. Exactly. So whenever they come up, we anyway inform all the all the agents who in turn inform all our students directly or indirectly connected with us. So would there be? He's asking uh, reduce fee expense, no, but higher living cost. Yeah, this 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 is a different case. He says, okay, fine, I will go in fall. But uh, what about the living cost? Is going to be the same or different? More or less the same. But I think uh, there is something which you would like to mention, uh, Dr. Sharma. What his uh, he is anticipating a higher living cost because of some reasons. Would you like to mention something about it here? Uh, see, okay. See, living cost. That no, sir. Okay. Uh, I think what is trying to ask, I am able to understand. See, many students they go. they go with their you know first six months fee and living cost or one year living uh, cost and uh, uh, that that area with that money mm -hmm. so because they they feel ki i will be i will start working when i go there and take care mm -hmm. of a living expenses i think okay. that's what he he means uh, see officially any country or we we advise that if you have to have sufficient money to take care of your education and living expense for the duration of the course to unmute matlab mute for the duration of the course mm -hmm. right this is what we are going to recommend now also that you have to have sufficient funds for the education Somebody and your living expenses mm -hmm. uh, i think somebody is on uh, on can you mute it somebody uh, administrator if you can just mute uh, everybody please okay so the living expense doesn't change in fact there is a possibility in the normal living expenses it may get reduced right because things have become cheaper and let me give an example like in india the rentals have have reduced now office rentals have reduced yeah by 20 by 20 or 30% everything has right. in india okay too. but that depends on the country i we cannot guarantee you in that country but this much we know that the living expense don't increase right but you need to have that fund what the fund you were anticipating that you will earn going in that country right for your living expenses there uh, you know there may be some question mark uh, which may arise uh, because uh, the job opportunity may currently have reduced as uh, because as you know because of lockdown many of the places there are um, uh, no jobs there is unemployment where there mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. the job opportunities currently i am repeating that to you currently may which are odd jobs we call them the odd jobs what kids do would have got reduced but all right so let me let me just summarize what you're trying to say what you're trying to say dr sharma is that the student uh, must uh, you know plan for his expenses quite in advance before he leaves india in the territory and he should be you know at least prepare him prepared himself completely to bear all his expenses living expenses and academic expenses by himself uh Uh, you know there are students this is a message to all we all know that we indians being indians you know we know how to struggle everywhere in the world and we what we do is uh, you know thoda paisa leke jate hain baki sochte hain udhar kama lenge aur hum kama bhi lete hain in fact our experience is that most of the students who go on a, and take who take an education bank loan um, and go don't even ask for a bank loan or 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 their parents to ask for more money starting from you know second year onwards they start earning this kind of money themselves so that at least their living cost is taken care of and sometimes even their academic fees is taken care of that opportunity might be missed out for some time so this is what i think you are trying to say right yes so yes. you one one should at least for 6 to 12 months next 6 to 12 months one should be prepared with the expenses to be borne by yourself and not be able to earn it there so udhar thoda sa compromise hai almost every country mein so one should take care of that uh, very well in advance Uh, Raji, uh, I want to add add one point. Raji, I want to add one point to this. Mm. Uh, this is for everybody. Please understand that your return on investment on a study abroad. I think people don't calculate that. Return mm. on investment means whatever money you have put in, right? Which means yeah. even the full time of study and the mm. time you get in for masters, it is less than two to three years. It means whatever money you have put in, 
all mm. expenses going from your pocket you are able to earn back in 2 to 3 years and return back and by the way this is 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 impossible in indian situation impossible whatever your fees may be right you you cannot return back your money in that year except for very few exceptions like if you done for iim or iit ah. right so uh, in couple of years you are able to return back uh, but in most of the situation but abroad any most of the study what you are able to do whatever you invest in 2 to 3 years so uh, you return back your money so please don't get worried about it there are enough banks enough institutions which are willing to help you with that fund even if your parents don't have the fund fully right based on you know the indian institutions are willing to fund your education and the kids can pay back that money at as i told you the 2 to 3 years they able to return back the money yeah, i agree with you dr sharma in fact there are students who you know look for very cheaper alternate cheaper academic opportunities here in india and say 5 lakh ka course hai 6 lakhs ka course hai तो हम लोग 30 लाख कैसे देंगे जब हम बाहर जाएंगे विदेश जाएंगे पढ़ने के लिए तो व्हेन यू गो अब्रॉड यस यू हैव टू प्लान फॉर एट लीस्ट से 25 लाख टू 30 लाख ऑन अ मिनिमम बेसिस ओके हाउ मच हाउ कैन आई रिकवर दैट मनी सो बट दिस पॉइंट इज वेरी राइट यू रिकवर दिस मनी फास्टर देन यू कैन थिंक मे बी एंड दैट्स व्हाट आई मेंशन यू नो इन द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन इन द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन द स्टूडेंट्स हैव बीन एबल टू रिकवर they have not been asking for the education loan from very second year onward which means they recover almost the entire money even when while they are only as a student you know they have not yet reached the job stage but while working in the weekends or in the evenings or any vacation time they can make so much money that they can uh, they take care of all their living expenses and the academic fees at time so imagine when you are fully qualified in that country from that program which is recognized fully in that country how much that can feed you with so the roi is much quicker in fact in the say what mostly it is in 12 to 12 to 18 months of time you are able to recover the entire money entire money so this is what is the answer to this question uh next question sir uh, will universities announce any scholarships for fall 2020 i think we already answered that we don't want to catch up with this once again it all depends nothing specific about um, I, i i can answer it myself uh, um nothing different uh, from any university about taking covid-19 situation in cons- in uh, particular but if and when they come up they announce uh, well in advance and we inform to our agents and students directly or indirectly i think there's one more question which has come up pretty and that's on the admission criteria uh, there are universities that have uh, announced waivers of gre gmat etc so will that affect the admission scenario So this uh, see, see, the most of the use, the few UST which is uh, which are informed about this waiver, uh, mm-hmm. did that during the time when GRE, GMAT, uh, IL did not have a system of you know uh, where you can give the exam sitting at home. By the way, you I'm saying mm-hmm. they were one of the first guys to come up. Now sitting at home, you can give your exams, right? All these exams and uh, and I will I will talk of the negative. if you don't have those scores you may get admission but your chances of getting scholarship or work in the ust or getting you know ta ship teaching assistant ship or ra ship they all reduces because you know um, uh, because there has to be some criteria on this they have to judge you right so i know it was a short time but i'm not hearing now that mm-hmm. the ust are saying that no no gre no il and things like this mm-hmm. uh, okay uh, because all of these uh, bodies Uh, have now come into a what i call it a proctored examination sitting at home right oh uh, someone is trying to ask hello everybody can hear me i think uh, some problem at my end technology problem oh uh, okay okay fine so everybody can hear thank you thank you we will have uh, actually there's a uh, there's a, another, another person is trying to ask about the job opportunities but i think i'll take that question later first uh, let us finish or the finish off with the admission opportunities uh, or the admission criteria issues that somebody has raised um, in fact that's a very right point that somebody has raised uh, should you take that kind of an offer of eliminating the you know gre or gmat completely or should you bounce at it or what should you do uh, yeah. see i i will give my personal recommendation on this uh, mm-hmm. according to me no right because uh, you mean, if not you, mean now, you should take it 
yeah so you, you will face uh, face challenge in the future in the future in your course itself hmm. because if that is being done that's being done only by you know universities which are not of that of that level they do not get ample amount of admission uh, applications so they allow you to you know bounce on this kind of opportunity of a waived gre or gmat one should always take it yes to match yourself in the rest of the class group or peer group in that classroom i think one should take it always uh well the answer is all i think there are some set of questions that have come up to visa jobs and pr etc we'll try to take some of the questions and i think that answers it all uh when do you think the visa process for all the countries will start <laughs> i i think i answered that uh, we earlier. already answered this question earlier yeah. huh? nobody knows that but uh, i depends think on the government it all depends upon the mutual governments it will be reciprocal from both sides what about international students and f1 students or students in j1 exchange visa program in fact there's been a recent visa change announced uh, by us particularly last weekend i think somebody is trying to ask on that is there any change of f1 or j1 situation for okay. any student so whatever we know of whatever information we have got and we have read and we have spoken to people in the universities the existing f1 and j1 uh, status does not change they continue mm -hmm. to be there right uh mm. what the government of us has come is h1b that's related to the job and they say they have suspended that till december it means no fresh h1b would be issued if your mm. h1b already there which is not for students you know, they will come to h1b after they finish the course to get the job right which is let's say 2 3 years 4 years uh, ahead of them right mm. currently they are saying no fresh h1b will be given but who have existing h1b will continue there is no change in f1 Uh, visa at this point of time there is okay. no change also in j1 visa and by the way it was ex expected that the opt thing will come under this it's not come under so trump has not touched the opt uh, students it means after you in us after you finish your study you are allowed anywhere from one one year to 28 months depending on which course you are doing of doing a job which is like a practical experience you do so that also has not been touched so safe to go it's safe to go yes i think only h1b situation is presently being upheld but everything else is uh, hopefully coming back to normal by end of this calendar year right yeah but, but and h1b is nothing to do with students here nothing to do with long students. long way for that but that is not impacted for students there has been no impact as we understand at least for now if for, for in any case any students were thinking about us as a destination country for study purpose no change at all no effect at all at least for now uh there are two questions which i'll take it together but before that i think uh, somebody is trying to jump in on one of the past answers past questions answered but this has not been touched so i'll say i'll try to take that once again somebody is trying to say is roi similar for an undergraduate same as a graduate program no 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 uh for undergraduate it becomes slightly high it may become 3 years for a master it is 2 years because see you're paying for 4 years please understand mm -hmm. when you pay for 2 years right. you get your money in exactly. practical 2 years and <laughs> pay for 4 years right right, right. so your Pretty roi logical. would be anywhere from 3 to 4 years aapka uh, stay ka period adhik hai zyada hai to aapka kharcha bhi uske 4 guna ho at least double ho sakta hai so yes. in that case uska jo roi thoda sa delayed rahega but even then it will be much quicker than you know, one, of yeah. the, one, one of the indian situation okay let me come back to the visa and job related issues that was answered for admission criteria or other, others i think there are two questions which i will take them together uh dr sharma with you and uh, you can answer it in your sequence somebody is trying to ask a pr related question how will this affect me uh, after my studies get over that is after four or two years that is bachelor's or or uh, masters and the second question is uh, will there be any recession effect affecting me during uh, during for my in course employment or post course employment issues they are both connected questions so i think you can take them together okay uh, see currently you need to realize like in india every country is grappling with unemployment because business is not working okay mm -hmm. uh, you can hear whether it's canada whether it's uk whether it's usa so currently people are unemployed and if you are a, or australia if you are a citizen of that country there the government pays you unemployment uh, you know allowance mm. okay unlike india unlike india so currently yes there is a challenge now when this going to come back uh, let's understand that these countries are better equipped to rebound back faster compared to india 
because their resources are much much higher level compared to india so uh, when i think i am not an astrologer i cannot tell you right but they rebound back much faster we can only take example of the later, last recession that happened was 2008 right in 2008 i think in, in around a year the way the money was pumped by us government uk government canada government you know trillions of dollars right they rebounded back in you know a, a year exactly right so as a student exactly. i am repeating if you are a student and you are going there we believe that by the time you finish your studies right things should have been much normal much much better than what they are today right but let's also accept nobody can guarantee you forget about that look at india position itself i was talking to some students in uh, some children of my friend who are doing their engineering from nit nit is after iit you get admission into nit national institute of technology now uh, they are very very worried about what will happen it's a fact because the companies are not coming to their campus this in this session they are not coming so it's a, it's a fact so yes if the students who are already there who in the final year would have got affected i'm sure of that because uh, unemployment is everywhere right and uh, this for this like this you cannot plan but when you are getting now into you can plan right and things rebound back much better and faster in those country than our country this much uh, is there and hence that's related to pr also the pr terms are not changed the pr terms are still the same in fact to add canada has said that even if you are doing online course it would be considered as part of your pr duration so countries are coming up with their own own rules aiding the pr so the pr conditions are not changing they have not changed in any country in fact they could become better right uh, employment situation when you are going to come out of education uh, if you are positive should be better much better than what they are today because those countries can rebound faster and better so that's my answer to both of the questions together Mr. Kumar. I think Mr. Kumar got disconnected for a while. Okay. Uh, hold on for a moment. Okay, in the meanwhile, uh, I'll help you to understand questions asked by some of the participants. Uh, this is very specific to the country. This is very specific to the country like New Zealand. Okay, what about the PR rules for New Zealand, and will it consider online course as PR duration? So that's okay. a question which has come from one of the participants. Okay, see. Uh... currently only canada has come up front and said that they will consider online uh, duration what you do as part of pr the other countries are yet to come with anything like that including new zealand so uh, if they consider and uh, you can leave your number and tell that if you are specifically interested in new zealand our team will uh, inform you uh, on their specific change if it happens but currently only uh, canada has come back okay uh so the, uh, you know what about the other countries will uh, by when all other countries will come with their own set of you know announcements <laughs> that's anybody's guess yeah <laughs> because <laughs> we will have, have to actually ask those prime ministers and presidents of those countries uh see what is the first uh, responsibility of a head of a country is to first save their own citizens like modi is doing for their our own country he saying atmanirbhar At similarly let's say the australian uh, prime minister he is saying that you know they won't get any allowances and he has told very clearly uh, i don't know he sent a notice if you are coming to australia please come with your entire fee and and your living expenses don't expect that you'll get a job there at this point of time we are not going to support you right so some countries are afraid so in fact uh, that is uh, indeed required for people to understand that the pre covid and the post covid the situation of migration and that to study abroad has changed a lot and will keep changing till the time it settle down the entire situation so in this kind of situation 
what will be your suggestion for a student who would be interested to travel abroad for their study maybe in the immediate future as early as for in a fall 2020 or maybe in spring 2021 okay see um, uh, i will give one common advice to everybody and please listen to this carefully and this is the uh, you know uh, overall thing if you are a undergraduate student right by undergraduate means after 12th ke baad you have got the admission even if your course is starting online please take the course don't take a uh, a gap year take admission if it starts online online is fine if you are able to go go so that's what is a for an undergraduate for masters i will divide into two parts if your master is of one year or 15 months uh, only then defer defer to january admission right because according to us according to me you should have because you're only there for the time period so to other you're there for 12 months or 15 months your education right and so you should do it face to face if you are in a master course which is of two years right if it's a two-year course then for a master to your course and if you are on to your job you are doing something currently in india because many of the master students are working professionals when they want to go they want to work for some time if you are doing something defer your admission to january if if you cannot defer right then uh, and if you're not doing anything it is not a bad idea to start your semester online so this is a common advice when i'm giving to all three sets of five irrespective of which country secondly uh, look at more options of country i will repeat that to you that advice what i am very strongly believe don't go by the choice of the country go by the choice of first your uh, career the program the university and then look at the country obviously you look at the country which is giving you a pr i'm not doubting anywhere that the pr should be you know given a tata bye bye it is important but most of the countries what we talk of give, allows a uh, they have a good pr uh, system uh, for them because they want you please understand why they're doing all of this they want young population who can come and contribute to their country that's why they are they are doing this uh, entire thing so uh, certainly this advice make a lot of sense for people to understand there's only last uh, question before i open um, the session for generic question also so last last question is nowadays um, the situation due to this covid has changed in terms of you know the professional advice also so what will be your take on you know guiding students and particularly parents uh, how to evaluate the right uh, you know agency who can help them to get proper professional advice okay so uh, my my advice on this area is please first don't ask this question which country it's a wrong question in fact if you go and talk to if somebody is asking you this question kaun se country mein jana hai to mere hisab se ye first step hi wrong step what you need to look at is that uh, what we uh, prefer is go through a scientific assessment for your child find out what could be the right career for him to give you example ye to undergrad ki baat hai for let's say masters if you already done your engineering let's say if you have done your mechanical engineering let me give example in spite after the mechanical engineering also you can find out whether you should continue in mechanical engineering or some masters or you go in something like a engineering management or you should go into you know in uh, let's say artificial intelligence in uh, mechanical engineering or you can go in robotics there are lot of choices which a scientific counselor through assessment can tell you so according to me scientific assessment is is what uh, the first step based on that you choose the courses relevant to you and obviously there can be various criteria based on what your marks has been what is your gre score or what is your ielts score and whether the country you know so many things are there ranking of university course in that university look at the course second look at the universities and then look at the country of course you are looking at pr those countries should give you pr in that series you should look at that and then start applying and when you apply you have to uh, 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 a good advisor divides your application into three parts or three set of university first is called safe university it means university where you will get admissions second is what we call moderate 
uh, you may get admission to that. And the third is called ambition UST, which are your dream UST where you want to work. So just follow all these steps scientifically. I strongly recommend that you start preparing early. I'm say we ask students, our students to start preparing two years early. So if you're an engineering student, start from minimum third year, uh, start preparing because you have to give your exams, IELTS, there so many things you have to give, right? You have to prepare your CV, you have to do projects, you have to do some extra courses, you have to do some social services, There's so many things which needs to be done, right? Start, start early, right? And go to better universities, universities where you are match your potential. I will repeat, currently I find that most of the students go to universities less than what their potential is. So that's really very insightful advice to the students. Uh, friends, uh, we are actually running uh, short of time. So before I can open this uh, forum for taking up last two questions, there is an announcement for all of you that we will be meeting every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at the same place with, uh, with different, different subjects which are related to education and this service Tasa Isha is proudly announcing for the benefit of people who who want ready-made advice or you can say the uh, professional advice so all of you are requested to join our group uh, I'll also end of this uh, session I'll also share a group uh, uh, link with all of you so that in case if you are interested to join this Saturday evening talks, we call we call it uh, Saturday evening talks. You can join our group, so you can stay update uh, updated here. So last two questions from participants. In case if you want to ask any other questions. Okay, uh, friends, it seems that uh, Dr. Raju Sharma has already answered all the questions raised by people. Uh, there is one question which has come, what about the UK opportunity? So it's a very open-ended question. Uh, we believe that uh, the person who has asked this uh, would like to know something about opportunities related to student as well as post-education, what kind of opportunity will be available? So, uh, see, UK for so many years, uh, precisely from 2012 to 2019, has been closed, uh, saying that you can only stay back for three months and you should get your job within three months, otherwise you go back to your country. Uh, that has been reversed after the new uh, Prime Minister has come, Mr. Johnson, right? Because he understands uh, uh, UK, uh, Indian or, you know, uh, after, and this decision, I believe, that he's taken after the Brexit. They have moved out of that's it. Right. Now, UK from this September, anybody doing a course and staying back, uh, uh, doing a course from this year, right, uh, from this uh, fall admission, will get two years of opportunity to stay back, right, and uh, get the job and uh, look for his PR, which was earlier three months. So, UK is back, uh, back in the game. Let me put this example, <laughs> put it this way. And uh, because they, they, they realized that, uh, you know, most of the students were going to US and Canada and Australia and they were losing on, you know, a good talent. And they wanted a talent after Brexit because now UK is, is again has become an island, what it was, and not part of the entire euro. Uh, and hence, uh, it's a good news. UK is back and they will allow a two years of uh, post stay uh, after your graduation or post post graduation. Okay, I hope there was a very related question which has come, that is uh, the UK, whether UK government is giving PR or not. I hope this question has been answered properly. Yes. So, uh, so thank you very much, fr uh, friends, for joining us today. I'm just opening up, I'm sharing this link on chat box and uh, you can connect with us on Saturday evening talks. It's a WhatsApp group. You can just join us on this uh, group in case if you are interested to receive updates about saturday evening talks which is which we have started and we would like also we would also like to meet you next saturday at 7 30. over to you raju kumar uh sorry there was a little interruption but that's what happens uh, when everybody else is looking at prime video or netflix probably 
all around in the <laughs> and in the area and saturday night so this sort happens some of us are working and trying to you know figure out what happens to this country due to students anyway thanks a lot of thanks a lot if you have any more questions uh, uh sorry for this little interruption that we had but if you have any more questions feel free to write to us now or at any point of time later we'll be glad to assist you about how we can plan out your future thank you good night thank you very much thank you rajiv thank you uh, makarand and entire team uh, thank you god bless